Hi everyone, it's Helen Hebert with the video of the month. It's February 2018 and um, I want to show you a folding technique. Uh, this is not what we're doing. This is too complicated, complex for me. Um, but this is a great book, Folding Techniques for Designers by Paul Jackson. He has written many books. You can look him up. And um, this book is really cool. It's even got a CD in the back, so you can print out some of the designs. And the project we're making is this uh, simple folded motif, motif. I'll show you how to do one square and then how to make multiples. And really, um, all of the projects are extensions of this basic fold and a few variations. So it's uh, advanced pleating and tessellations and I mean look at that. Exquisite. It takes a lot of uh, concentration and patience. Um, so let's get started. So just a bit about the tools and materials first. Um, as I said I'm going to make just a, one simple pleated fold and then I'm going to do a multiple. And these are two different papers. They're both uh, similar. They, they're a text weight but they've got a crispness. This is um, a wrapping paper that I got at my local bookstore. It's made by Rifle Paper Company. And then this is a, a Japanese Kozo like paper that's printed and I got this at Mickey's paper in Berkeley, California. I've got a cutting mat, a bone folder, and a ruler. First I'm going to show you the basic fold. I'm first going to create a valley fold, um, taking the front side and folding it over on itself in half, point to point. And then I'm going to open that, flip it over, and create two diagonals. So that direction and then this direction. And now when I open it up I can, because I fold it on the two sides, this automatically wants to do this and tuck in. Okay, so that first square of paper that I folded was 5 by 5 inches. But this is scalable. You could do any square size or even a rectangle once you get the basic technique down. Um, so again, this is now this is uh, 5 inches by 25 inches. So I've multiplied it 5 times in one direction. And I've already drawn my fold lines on the back. This is what would be on that CD if you printed out uh, the templates for these folds. Um, and I've only drawn these so that you can see where I'm folding. You don't necessarily need to draw. But you, you would take and use your um, cutting mat or measure. I like to use my mat. And every five inches, draw a line or just score. So I'll score I'll score all of those vertical lines and then I'll also score the um, diagonal lines. Now the next thing I'm going to do is um, that same fold just multiple times. So all of these vertical lines get folded um, like mountains on the back side, or there'll be valleys on this side. So first I'll do that. So now I've got those vertical lines as mountains, and I'm going to fold the diagonals as valleys. And um, you can just work your way through the sections. like this. I'm using this fold to line up here. And then I'll just continue until I've folded all five sections, those diagonals. 
And I think you can imagine now how this gets more complex as you add sections. And now the next thing I'm going to do is um, divide the verticals in half. Now I could have drawn these lines initially, um, so I'll need to center this here. But I'm sometimes I like to just work as I go. So, and again, I don't have to draw that line. I can just score it. So I'll score midway, uh, so that's at two and a half inches on each of these sections. And then I'll fold along those midlines. Now if I pop in the middle here, that's going to pre-crease all those folds. And then I can just work my way down and gather this up. It's like a uh, slinky, collapsible form. And there it is. Now I love to just play with forms like this and imagine what they could become. Um, so this is collapsible. It could be some sort of book form, a sculpture. I like the idea of this. The, it's got the plants on it. It's like the plants are growing. Um, from the back side, it's pretty interesting. Look how it sits nicely on the table. You could gather. Um, you can gather it in different ways to create a star form. Um, again, you could make this in different sizes or shapes. You could make multiples. I've got another one here and put them together maybe as a book form. This could be a page. So many, many possibilities. Here's another piece that I I connected two ends to create this form. And then you can tuck one edge and start to create interesting shapes. So I hope you'll try it. Send me a photo if you do and have fun.